Hello everybody, today we're going over TriHackMe's intro to Digital Forensics Room, which is part of the Introduction to Cybersecurity module. As usual, this is going to be more of a demonstration of the questions than an explanation of the content inside of the tasks. However, I will briefly go over what is covered inside of the tasks themselves. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Task one is Introduction to Digital Forensics. This task basically just gives a definition to what Digital Forensics is and does a great job of giving some brief information regarding it. I highly suggest that you read through this. I'll be linking the room in the description. So let's go ahead on to the questions. Consider the desk in the photo above. In addition to the smartphone, camera, and SD cards, what would be interesting for digital forensics? Well, looking at the photo, the only other piece of technology would be the laptop. All right, and moving on to task two, digital forensics process. This task goes over chain of custody and what you need to do when you arrive on scene and how the entire process works. Going on to the questions, it is essential to keep track of who is handling at any point in time to ensure that evidence is admissible in the court of law. What is the name of the documentation that would help establish that? That would be chain of custody. All right, and moving on to task three, which is what we're really here for, the practical example of digital forensics. So first, we're going to go ahead and start the attack box. All right, looks like it's up. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out and make this full screen and exit that split view. And let's take a look at the content. So the situation for this task is our cat, Gatto, has been kidnapped. The kidnapper has sent us a document with the requests in Microsoft Word document format. We have converted the document to PDF format and extracted the image from the Microsoft Word file for our convenience. And basically it just goes over and says that we can download the attached file, um, but it's actually already inside of the attack box. The room goes on to explain that when you create a text file, TXT, some metadata gets saved by the operating system, such as the file creation date and last modification date and that information that's kept within the files metadata can be retrieved when you use tools such as PDF info or XIF tool, which is what we're going to be using in a minute. What we're going to do is we're gonna see what we can learn from the PDF file, and we're gonna to try to read the metadata using PDF info like I just mentioned. PDF info displays various metadata related to a PDF file, such as the title, subject, author, etc., etc. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to go over to the attack box and open up a terminal. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and make that full screen. And if we go back, we can see that they want us to go to this directory. So we are going to cd into root slash rooms. We're gonna take a look at what's inside. And I believe it wanted us to go into this directory here. So I'm just gonna copy that, cd, paste, enter. And let's take a look at what's inside here. It looks like we have the image, the ransom letter in that Word document format, and the ransom letter in that PDF format. And they said that they already extracted the image from it. If we opened up the Microsoft Word document, we would see everything that's in here, as well as this. But we're not gonna do that because we are going to be using PDF info in order to take a look at that ransom letter. So we're gonna do PDF info ransom dash letter dot pdf and we can see now that it gives us a lot of the metadata information and let's see what the question was using pdf info find out the author of the attached pdf file we can see here author and gree shepherd so let's just copy that paste it in there we go and now it goes on to photo exif data which stands for Exchangeable Image File Format, and it's a standard for saving metadata to image files. So whenever you take a photo with your smartphone or camera, plenty of information gets embedded in the image. And also goes on to explain that because smartphones are equipped with a GPS sensor, finding coordinates embedded in the image is highly probable, like latitude and longitude. And we're going to be using EXIF tool in order to find out that info. So we're gonna go back to the terminal and we're going to do exif tool, and we're gonna be doing it on letter-image.jpg. And we see we get a whole bunch of information to look through, which is pretty awesome. 
when you think about it. But let's see what information it wants us to find. Using EXIF tool or any similar tool, try to find where the kidnappers took the image they attached to their document. What is the name of the street? Well, if we want to find out where they are, we'd have to find the GPS coordinates. And we can actually, if we look through, we can see GPS position is right here. So we will copy this. And we're going to paste it into Google Maps, which they actually provide a link for right here. So we'll just open that in a new tab. We'll paste paste that in. We actually have to change the DEG to the degree sign. I'm just going to copy that and just manually paste it in. Let's back that up. Change that one as well and search. See what we did wrong. It's got to be like that. And search. And here's where it is Milk Street. Fitting for a cat. And what is the model name of the camera used to take the photo? We can see that we have a lot of information. So it might be a good idea to grep the info that we're looking for and we're looking for the model name of the camera so keyword camera there so let's do messed up there a little bit sorry about that go back up pipe grep camera and here we can see the model name is a Canon EOS R6 so we're just going to copy that paste it in and there we go we found the model of the camera and we finished the room this room was pretty short, just like the other intro rooms. They have full rooms on forensics, which I highly recommend you go and check out. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I like to do more of a demonstration than an explanation, so I hope that it was worth the watch. Like if you liked, and please subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thank you, and have a good one.